Hello everyone, Pahamar here with the next episode of my Let's Mod series. In today's episode, we're going to talk about how to set up your development environment for Minecraft 1.6. So I've had, uh, this has probably been my number one request lately, uh, even more so than uh, more lessons, is to how to do Pahamar's development environment for Minecraft 1.6. So I'm going to be going away for a couple weeks, I'm getting married. Uh, so don't look for anything new after this video, but uh, I just wanted to get this out there for everyone because it's been very, very highly requested. So why don't we get started? First thing, let's go back to our development win uh, folder. So in previous videos, you've seen that I've had um, an API folder, a source folder, as well as there is an Eclipse and a MCP folder in here. This was all my folders related to Minecraft. And you'll notice that Eclipse and MCP have been removed. It's just API and source. Actually, let me add the Eclipse folder back again while I'm talking to you guys. So the big difference between Minecraft 1.5 and 1.6 for development is uh, mostly related to the libraries that ship with Minecraft, how they're uh, loaded in. There's a lot more now, as well as um, Forge has, uh, has changed how they interact, at least in the folder structure with MCP, so I'm going to be showing you guys a new way of doing that. Other than that, everything's pretty much the same. So, To get started with uh, your development environment for 1.6, you're going to need the latest version of MCP, the Minecraft Coder Pack, as well as you're going to need the latest version of Forge. So I'm just going to briefly go through that. So to go to the MCP website, so mcp.oceans-labs.de you want to go to the downloads page, select Minecraft, and currently you're going to want MCP 8.05. If you click this little blue arrow right here, you'll be prompted for the download for uh, MCP 8.05. So I've already got that, I'm going to skip this. Now you're going to want to get the latest version of Forge right now as of this morning. The latest version is Forge 8.17, so you're going to want to get the source. Don't worry about installer. Installer is for setting up uh, Forge in your play environment. Because we're doing this for development, we just want source. So you want to download the source. Once you got that, and I'll show that I've got it here, MCP and Forge. Actually, disregard everything I said about MCP. You'll understand in a second. Right, and to further prove that, we're going to get rid of MCP because Forge will do it for us. And people have been telling me that since I did my first development environment. The reason I didn't pay attention to the Forge one, I knew it was there. I didn't use it because I liked my setup better. I, that was just how I configured it. That's how I enjoyed it. So now that's changed, so I'll show you. You're going to want to get the files out of the Forge zip. So I'll just have that kind of tucked there while I do this. So you're going to want to go back to your development folder with API, Eclipse, and Source, and drag the Forge folder into it. So you're extracting the contents of the Forge zip into your development environment. So now we have a Forge folder. And close this zip. Go into Forge, and just like in previous uh, videos, you're going to want to run the install. Let's uh, make this larger. This will take longer than before because now it's downloading all the files it needs as it's decompiling. So we will let this run and I'll come back to you when it's finished. Just a quick little um, snippet here just so you can see exactly what it's doing and what you should be expecting. So you can see here it is downloading the assets for Minecraft. So right now it's just pulling down all the language files. This will be going on for several minutes so don't be concerned if it hangs for a little while and everything it's just downloading a ton of files. So, Okay, so Forge is finished installing now. You can see a ton of stuff's been patched and everything, and we're finished. So we'll hit any key to continue. I've already opened up Eclipse again. Uh, I've pointed it back at that development slash Eclipse folder for the workspace. Now we can get started on setting this all up. So. I'm just going to switch it over to the Java perspective. I happen to have the Java EE version for work-related stuff, so most of you out there should have just the Java version. So we're going to start a new Java project. We're going to call it Minecraft. 
And I believe I have... yeah, okay. So we'll stick with Java 1.7. We will remove this source folder like we normally would. Hit finish. So now we have a Minecraft Java project. We'll get rid of that again. So now let's start adding Minecraft. So we'll go new folder, advanced. I'm not going to bother with the uh, special uh, variables again. We're just going to link directly to it. So we'll go to, you want to get to your development forge, MCP. So you see MCP is now inside of forge. You're going to want to go down to source, select Minecraft. So if you have something similar, it should be development slash forge slash MCP slash source slash Minecraft. Now we have the Minecraft code in there. We're going to right click on it, go to build path, use the source folder. So now we also need to add one more folder. We'll just navigate to it again. Development, there it is. And I believe it is that one. No. Uh, jars, that's the one I want. Okay, for jars, we're going to want to go to resource and add some resource uh, filters on this. So include only files and folders. Let me, we are going to want libraries. We are going to include only files and folders versions. And we are going to exclude all folders natives. And we want to make sure it says all children recursive. So the only exclude is folders recursive natives. Hit OK. So you should see things set up like this. Now we need to add some libraries. So we're going to right click on Minecraft. We're going to go to build path, configure build path. Under libraries here, this is going to get kind of monotonous. Uh, so in libraries, you want to make sure you add all of the Let's flip over to the proper directory. Jars. Okay. So now we're going to need to add all the libraries that Minecraft needs. This is going to take a bit. So let's see. The first one we're going to want to add is the Minecraft one. So that's in jars, versions, 1.6, jar. For this one, this is the only one you need to set the native library location. So we might be able to do this in the workspace. I haven't done this yet. Let's just double check the other way. Okay, so we can do it from workspace. So you're going to want to go jars, versions, 162, 162 natives. Okay, so there, we have natives. Now we come back to adding more. So now everything else we need is inside of libraries. So see here, there's all these different folders inside of them all. You drill them down, there'll be one file inside of that long chain of folders. So this is why it can get a little bit long. So I'm going to go ahead and add these all uh, and we'll be back in a second. Really quick, one of the things you can also do inside of Eclipse is you'll see here some of these libraries, for example, the JSON library here, it has a jar as well as it has a sources. You only want to add the jar, but I'll show you something you can do with the sources. So you can see here I've already added the JSON jar to my library and if you expand this out you'll also see so we've de always dealt before with something with a native library we can actually at attach the source for a library so we can actually double click this and we can once again I wonder if we can do this uh, through the workspace 
jars, libraries. There we go. Okay, so we can do it in here too. So jars, libraries, this is the path to get to the JSON one, sources. What this does is now if your code references anything inside of this library, if you want, you can actually view the source for that library. So once again, you don't inside the libraries here, you don't want to add the sources as a external jar, but you can attach the source to its respective jar. So we'll be back in a second when this is all finished. Okay. So we're done adding a ton of libraries, and I myself have attached uh, all the sources to the appropriate libraries as they, uh, they exist. So you can see this quite a bit, and that was a very long exercise if you've done that yourself. Um, but you'll see we got everything inside of here. The only one I didn't add is for the LWJGL. You don't have to add the platform jar, as well as these Scala ones here. Scala is another JVM based programming language that you are now able to program Minecraft mods in. Uh, I don't have the details on how to do that, um, but I'm sure there's those out there who do. Uh, I've added those as well here. So Now I have no errors because all the, uh, the dependencies have been resolved, but there's a ton of warnings. And just like before, the way to get rid of the warnings, right click on Minecraft, Properties, Java Compiler, Ignore optional compile problems. Okay, so it's going to build the workspace again. And there we go. So now that all that's left to do is to set up the uh, runtime environments. So the green run button up here, we're going to want to go to run configurations. We're going to want a new Java application, so just double click on Java application to get a new one. And we're going to call this no mods client. The project is Minecraft. And the class we're going to want to, to start with, the main class, we do search. We are going to want launch. So net Minecraft launch wrapper. For arguments, I'm just going to paste this in. And this is a straight copy from Forge. So these are the arguments you want. You want the version one, and you want this tweak class. This tweak class is very important. Similar to last time, we're going to want these VM arguments. So incremental garbage collection, and we're going to set the max and the minimum size to 1 gig. And just because I have this saved off to the side as well, the working directory is Minecraft slash jars. That's it. You hit apply and you hit run. And we should see Minecraft loading. And there we go. We have Minecraft 162 with, it is an older version of MCP that comes with Forge, but we have Forge for 817. We have three mods loaded. So there we go. Now I'll show you how to do the server one as well. So we'll do a new one here and we'll call this one no mods server. It's going to be a different main class this time. This time we want server launch wrapper. So CPW mods FML relauncher server launch wrapper. No arguments here, but we're going to want the same VM arguments, and we're going to want to point it at the same working directory. So there we go, we have a no mod server, so hit run, just to make sure this is working. And there we go, the Minecraft server is loading. And when this is finished, we'll kill it, and I'll show you how to add another mod. So we'll stop that. Now we have ways to load it, to launch it, I should say, client and server. We have working Minecraft code in here. 
Now let's add another project. So once again, because it's always my go-to, equivalent exchange three, not four. We're not there yet. We're going to remove that from the build path. And we're going to go to projects, add, and we're going to make it depend on Minecraft. We're going to hit finish. And I just forgot something about the Minecraft one. So we're going to want to come back to Minecraft, build path, configure build path, the order and export tab here. We are going to want to export everything except the JRE system library. So this will export all of these libraries to any projects that depend on this project here. So all of these libraries here will be available to Equivalent Exchange 3. So hit OK. We'll get rid of this source directory. And we will link this to my source folder here. Equivalent Exchange 3, link it to the common folder. And similarly, we will link to the resources folder. And we'll right click on both of them, go to Build Path, use the source folder. So you notice I'll have a couple warnings here because some things aren't finished. We have a working mod inside of our development environment with Minecraft. Now let's add some more run configurations here so that we could launch this mod with this. So we're going to go to No Mods Client. We're going to right click and go Duplicate. We're going to rename this one to Modded Client. Everything else will be the same except for Class Path. For user entries, we'll add projects, Equivalent Exchange 3. We'll uncheck these two boxes here, so we'll add that there. We'll hit Apply, and we're going to do the same thing with Server. So, modded Server. We'll come to the Class Path tab, User Entries, Add Project, Equivalent Exchange 3. Uncheck those two boxes, OK, Apply. And let's run modded client. We have four mods loaded, one of them being equivalent exchange three. And if we go into a world, once it builds the world, We can see the equivalent exchange three stuff inside of there. So close out of that. So that is how we set up a mod development environment for Minecraft 1.6. Uh, in the next episode, I'll show you some of the changes that have happened uh, in how you set up a mod file in 1.6, as well as I'll get to talking about the idea of the different sides related to Minecraft, the, uh, the client side and the server side, as well as the idea of proxies uh, and proxy classes. So until next time, uh, please follow me on Twitter and subscribe to my YouTube and all that social media jazz. I'll be back in a couple weeks. Uh, I know it's going to be a while between this and the next episode, but I am getting married. So that uh, unfortunately takes, actually no, for, for me that fortunately takes precedence. So I will see you in a couple weeks and thanks for watching.